Hey, what's good, ladies and gentlemen? In this Elden Ring video, I wanted to talk to you about my Spellblade Mage build. And I found this build really interesting because you're able to take the base mage playstyle and flip it around, turning you into a straight up melee mage, which I found pretty damn cool. So if you're interested in any of that, stick around and let's get into it. So let's start off with the base of the gameplay and how this build ends up playing out. We're going to stick with all of the melee spells that we have in Elden Ring. So we're going to focus in mainly on that. And we're not going to carry a weapon at all. I do carry a shield on the offhand just to give ourselves a little bit more protection and speaking of protection i do choose to wear heavier armor we'll go more in depth about that and how you can switch that up to up your dps a little bit and since we don't have a weapon at all we're going to use the ash of war spinning weapon which pumps out insane dps i use it as more of a defensive tool when enemies start to get really aggressive running up on you you're able to just put this out and they'll just run right into it and get completely obliterated but the reason why i don't lean into the ash of war spinning weapon too much and that's up to you you could totally make the dps output of this ash of war bonkers and we'll go into how to do that later on in the video but i don't do that i use it defensively because once you use this ability you're kind of stuck in that animation for quite some time once you're caught using that spinning weapon you could definitely end up taking some hits but other than that our main focus is going to be kyrian slicer kyrian piercer and abdullah's moon blade once you get up there into the levels and you end up scooping that up the only spells i ended up using in this build are going to be obviously glintstone pebble does a great job to just clean up enemies and then i do use the full moon sorcery because the staff we rock to get that spinning weapon to have that unique ability increases our full moon damage so why not put that in right for a nice ranged attack but obviously if you're having a hard time with a boss or something just swap that out with comet azure and you'll just be able to send any boss home real quick so a lot of this class is leaning on kyrian slicer so that we're able to sweep up a lot of enemies super quick we're able to save a lot of mana because it's one of the most amazing mana efficient spells in Elden Ring and that's just going to be our bread and butter moving forward. I think it's really cool there's so many different weapons in this game and just being able to choose nothing is sweet. Using our spells and abilities as that main lethal weapon is definitely a unique play style. I can get you pretty far even going into new game plus. So now that we know what we're going to be expecting out of this class let's jump into the armor and the staff really quick so that you can decide if you want to really start using and focusing on that ash of war as your main ability. So in my specific build I chose to go with heavier armor so that we're able to take more of a hit and kind of get that melee mage knight build going on feels really good so we're going to be using the carrion regal scepter because this is going to give an insanely unique damage profile to the ash of war spinning weapon you get this nice blue cone in front of you hitting that enemy like seven times and honestly doing a great amount of damage if you're choosing to use this more as your main ability then i would definitely go with rajier's outfit because every piece of that cloth armor that you wear is going to be increasing the glintstone damage from not only the glintstone pebble but the ash of war is going to get the benefit of that as well so you can really spike the damage of that ash of war if you want to i chose to go defensively with it because it was a lot of fun just seeing a whole bunch of enemies run into your ash of war even on pvp it ends up happening which is hilarious if you go that route you can go the rajier's full set which will skyrocket that damage and then you can go with the winged sword insignia talisman you can also go with godfrey's icon enhancing the charge spells and skills that's gonna bump up the damage as well and there's a few other talismans that work really well to just bump that damage potential through the roof for that ash of war but that's totally up to you have fun with it mess around but back to my specific build here with a lot of points attributed to endurance you're able to wear heavy armor passively and we're gonna want this anyways just because we're gonna want to cast kyrian slicer many many times without running out of stamina so both of those things kind of fall in the same boat where you're able to wear heavy armor as a Mage, which is great extra protection you're able to rock the shield and on top of that now you're just going to have more available stamina so that you could spam your Kyrian slicer and all your other spells that you're trying to get out quickly the downside to this is that you're not going to be breaking any enemy stances with this build just because it's all spells. So they're going to be able to walk through majority of what you're putting out. So it's great that it comes out so quick because you'll be able to hit them once or twice and then kind of back off, put your shield up, get ready to take a hit and then weave in another two or three Kyrian slices as you progress through the fight. So I definitely would consider a shield on this build. And like I said, since we're pumping so many points into endurance to be able to use Kyrian slicer more often without exhausting ourselves you're able to rock the shield passively anyways so good stuff so let's get into the main spells what i use and how i actually set them up in rotation so that this way you can get to your spells 
as fluidly as possible. So the spells I use in the exact rotation, first off is gonna be the Great Blade Phalanx. You already know it's a fa fantastic defensive ability and having that on slot one just makes it nice to kind of set off each battle if you choose to have that on. And then it's your choice to kind of either swap twice and go right to Kyrian Slicer or you have the next spell, which would be the Glintstone Pebble. Next up, Carrion Piercer is definitely a clutch spell because when you hold it down and you charge it, it has such insane range and it knocks people over. So even bigger enemies, enemies with shields, all that stuff, you're able to charge that thing fully at a nice distance and then knock them over on top of it, which gives you time to settle back in. Next up is Abdullah's Moonblade, which is a fantastic melee ability with an AoE component that can't be overlooked. If you have like three, four guys around you, boom, that's exactly the spell that I'm going for keeps them at ranged so it gives you a little bit more breathing space next up just to kind of have it i have the gavel of hema if that's how you say it great spell but sometimes it takes a little bit long to get off depending on what enemies you're facing but overall just another great spell to have in your arsenal and then because we're using that specific staff it increases the moon potency so we do have renala's full moon feel free to swap that out for a comet azure that's what i end up doing if i find a boss it's just giving me a hard time because we're a mage at the end of the day you're able to swap into this and obliterate whatever you need to and then you can always swap back to the moon but that's all the spells i choose in a nutshell really fun way to play this game just mainly focusing on those melee spells all right so let's move along to talismans shall we so the talismans i'm currently using is going to be the green turtle talisman you're going to find because we're using kyrian slicer so often you're going to want that stamina to recover super quick and you really don't want to be thinking about that as you're going to be spending a lot of time spamming that spell next up i use the stargazer heirloom this is giving us an extra free point in intellect boosting our damage always good stuff also, we got the Kyrian Filigreed Crest, another banger, lowering all the FP consumed by skills. Can't beat that because that's all we're doing is casting spells. And then last but not least, I had the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman vastly boosts our physical damage negation. That's always a winner, right? We're in the heat of things. We're always in melee range. Definitely a banging talisman to be rocking in this build. The Flask of Wondrous Physic. I'm going to go with the classic Magic Shrouded Crack tier, temporarily boosting all the magic damage since every single thing we do is magic. That's giving us 100% uptime. And then the Cerulean Hidden Tier, eliminating all the FP cost. So moving on, let's talk about where to allocate your stat points at what specific level. So starting off at level 50, your stats are going to look something like this. Vigor is going to be at 30. Mana is going to be at 20. Endurance is sitting at 15. Nothing in strength. I have 15 into dexterity because that's what my base class came with. And intelligence, you're going to want to spike that up to 21. So when you get to level 100, we got our health to 40. Mine sitting at 25. Endurance sitting at 18. Again, bump that endurance a bit so that this way you're able to cast more of those Kyrian Slicer spells without running out of steam. Strength, again, we're not touching. Dexterity, though, that we're going to start to increase as we go further because now you're going to be able to cast your spells a bit quicker and last but not least we have intelligence sitting at 50. Moving on from that at level 150 you do have an extra point here to play with but I put the health at 51 your mana is going to be sitting at 30. You'll have a nice mana pool to play with now. For endurance, I'm sitting at 20. Now you have a plethora of armor that you're able to rock. Again, strength nada. Dexterity sitting at 20, being able to pump out just a little bit quicker. And then now you'll be sitting at 80 intellect. So you'll be just an absolute powerhouse when it comes to each and every one of these carrying slicers. So for my final thoughts on this build, definitely work in what combos of spells you find useful to you and set those up in priority from beginning to last. Like I said, I love setting up the spinning weapon catching somebody into that and then while that's going you'll be able to swap through your spells and then get prepped for what you want to cast next without really losing any downtime of damage that's what i feel like really hooked me into this build the most is just the awesome combos that you can kind of pull out and you don't have to awkwardly be running around while swapping through your spells because you can usually keep one going as you swap if you learned anything or have any questions or comments as always leave them down below and if you found this build interesting at all hit the like button for me that would be awesome and if you're feeling froggy, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Nobody's stopping you for more Elden Ring builds coming your way. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy, guys.